Maganda umaga sa Malacanang Press Corps sa ating mga bisita. Welcome po sa regular weekly, I mean weekly economic forum dito sa Malacanang. Kasama natin ngayong araw si PCOO Under Secretary Lorraine Badoy. Good morning. Um, good morning Malacanang Press Corps and good morning, good morning uh, the whole country and good morning Secretary, good morning Under Secretary. Um, welcome to the sixth weekly economic briefing hosted by the economic development team of the Duterte administration and of the PCOO. Today, we will be discussing an issue that affects all of us, our health. Um, sorry. The government takes this matter seriously in its effort to build an inclusive and sustainable economy for the present and future generations of Filipinos. Part of the 10-point socioeconomic agenda of the president is to invest in human capital development and provide a better quality of life for all Filipinos. To achieve the goal of a more comfortable life for all, we need to make sure that efficient, adequate, and affordable health services can be availed of by each and every Filipino no one excluded. This is supported by the Universal Health Care Bill or UHC. Once passed, UHC shall give all Filipinos better access to health care, most especially to the poorest of the poor. The House of Representatives approved its version of the UHC bill September of last year, and Senate's version is now in the pipeline. During the last SONA, our president, who champions UHC, emphasized his wholehearted support for the passage of this bill. Wide coverage of basic health services will be made available via UHC, and this means that the government will need about 305 billion pesos to fund the program. Revenues collected from proposed reforms in sin taxes and mining taxes will provide additional funding for the UHC. Government believes that access to health services, besides being a basic human right, is an investment in our people that will help sustain the country's fast economic growth. This is just one of the many committed efforts of the Duterte administration in taking care of the public we serve and securing our country for future generations of Filipinos. Um, so without further ado, um, may I introduce May I welcome and introduce the Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III and Under Secretary Tina Kanda of the DBM. Thank you. Good morning and thank you very much, uh, uh, PCOO USEC uh, Lorraine Badoy. And uh, also uh, joining me here is the uh, USEC of DBM, Tina Kanda and uh, also uh, the officials of DBM and uh, the DOH. Uh, and uh, and uh, above all, I think uh, the, our media uh, representatives, uh, supporters uh, of uh, the DOH, and uh, of course, all uh, other agencies of the Duterte administration. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to talk about the Universal Healthcare Bill. In his State of the Nation address, President Rodrigo Duterte certified the Universal uh, Healthcare Bill as an urgent priority of uh, the government. Uh, it reflects the commitment of this administration to ensure that Filipinos live a good, comfortable, and productive life. The next few slides will highlight key provisions of the UHC. First, for health care financing. The UHC bill clarifies which services are to be paid for by the DOH the local government units, and PhilHealth. We therefore propose that population-based services are financed by the DOH and LGUs, while medical services, or what we call individual-based services, are financed through a national purchaser, which is our PhilHealth. 
This means that all funds intended for medical services are pooled into PhilHealth, thus also allowing them to have adequate negotiating power over healthcare providers mm -hmm. and selectively mm -hmm. contract those who abide by agreed quality and cost containment. To attain sustained 100% population coverage, the proposal is to simplify PhilHealth membership into two types. First is contributory. Second, non-contributory, whereby all Filipinos who are not formally employed or remitting taxes are automatically considered non-contributory members and thereby whose premium shall automatically be subsidized by the national government. This will replace the current point of care and point of service enrollment. Next, in terms of service delivery, the UHC bill shall make primary care a prerequisite for accessing higher levels of care by ensuring that PhilHealth pays for primary care services and that secondary and tertiary care are reimbursed only when appropriate, thereby driving consolidation of consolidation of healthcare providers into networks that practice gatekeeping and referral. In order for the public sector to use its PhilHealth revenues to improve the health system further, government health facilities and networks shall be allowed to retain their health income into a special health fund. Third, through stronger health regulations, the UHC Bill seeks to ensure that prices of goods and services are transparent and co-payments are fixed or predictable. Together with the Insurance Commission, the DOH intends to ensure complementarity of private health insurance, PHIs, and health maintenance organizations, or the HMOs, plans to ensure financial protection for all Filipinos. The bill also proposes to ensure regular flow of health workers by requiring a two-year return service to underserved and geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, or the GIDA, uh, commonly referred to, for all health and allied health professionals graduating from public schools. This is similar to what other ASEAN countries have done to address inadequate and maldistribution of health workers. And fourth, recognizing that this administration weighs heavily on good governance and accountability. The bill proposes to institutionalize reforms that will ensure better health sector performance. Submission of health and financial data to ensure accountability by all key players in the health sector shall be mandated. Furthermore, health technology assessment shall be required prior to making decisions on what the government should or should not fund. Finally, the PhilHealth board membership, which is currently is a 17-person board, will be reduced to 11 as we propose this in the UHC bill. In summary, UHC aims to realize the right of every Filipino to health. As such, the bill provides the health system architecture <coughs> needed to achieve universal health care, which guarantees the following. First, this ensures all Filipino families are enrolled in PhilHealth and protecting them from impoverishing costs of medical care. Second, it strengthens primary health care by matching families to a primary care provider that will ensure they get the appropriate health services that they need at the appropriate health facilities. Third, it improves access to health services by ensuring the availability of medicines, health human resources, and health facilities to all Filipinos. And lastly, strengthening the capacity of government to regulate and exercise its policy making and governance function to protect Filipinos and ensure that they have access to the best quality of care. Next slide. Funding universal health care requires significant investment from the government. And based on our latest estimates, the incremental cost requirements will be roughly at about 135.56 billion pesos for the first year, ramping up or increasing uh, all the way to 256.31 billion pesos uh, on the fourth year. 
The key cost driver here is healthcare financing to provide for premium subsidies and primary care capitation for the Filipinos who need it most. And I would like to highlight, however, that investing in UHC is actually a wise investment because it is investing in our people. Aside from the benefit of a healthier and more productive population, UHC is key to reducing poverty in our country by protecting Filipinos from the high cost of care. And to make UHC feasible, we are looking at the proposed increase in tobacco tax. The DOH is currently supporting the proposal of increasing tobacco excise tax at 90 pesos per pack. At this rate, we estimate to have an incremental increase in revenues of roughly about 37.2 billion. This will be used to augment the budget from General Appropriations Act for funding of UHC, particularly to cover the premium payments of the non-contributory sector. The proposed increase in tobacco taxes is a win-win for the health of Filipinos. Not only will it increase the funding to finance UHC, tobacco taxes are also estimated to reduce, and I repeat, to reduce smoking prevalence from uh, 15.7, uh, uh, rather, this will bring down smoking prevalence down to 15.7% from 21.6% according to the Global Adult Tobacco Survey of 2015, thereby translating into lower number of cases of cancer and non-communicable diseases which are the leading causes of mortality and morbidity in the country. So on this note, I'd like to thank you all, and I am uh, very glad to uh, welcome or to answer questions from uh, our uh, media representatives. Thank you. Yes, can we have uh, Yusek uh, you, you Kanda first? Okay. No, I don't have any opinion. Okay, question MPC, Alvin. Please. Secretary Duque, uh, yes. good morning, Bob. Good morning. Uh, sir, uh, hindi kasi ako familiar doon sa pagkakaltas, eh, doon sa PILAL. Sir, magtataas ba ng kaltas o sa monthly deduction ng mga empleyado tungkol doon sa, 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 sa PILAL na sinisingil? Well, for the formal, doon sa formal sector, doon sa mga empleyado ng gobyerno, at empleyado ng mga pribadong mga korporasyon ay uh, nagtaas na ang PhilHealth uh, sa kauna-unahang pagkakataon, pagkakataon sa buong kasaysayan ng PhilHealth nagtaas po ng 0.25% which is really minuscule. Napakaliit po nito eh, considering na ang uh, benefit payout ng PhilHealth ay eh, patuloy na tumaas na lang tumaas in fact, last year, ang halos benefit payout ng uh, PhilHealth para sa mga serbisyong ibinigay ng atin mga member healthcare uh, provider institutions ay umabot na sa 107 to 110 billion pesos. An outlay of about roughly 1.8 billion per week last year. And yet, the premium contribution has really increased in very, very nominal, very small uh, amount. Pero magka, magka ano, uh, in particular sec, tsaka pagka naging low na yung uh, UHC, magtataas pa ba? Well, ang uh, sa subsidized sector ng uh, PhilHealth, ito yung para sa ating mga mahihirap na kababayan, ang amin pong iminungkahing uh, premium uh, payment is uh, 3,500 per family. Pero ang uh, inaprubahan lamang, uh, for 2019 ay uh, 2,400 pesos. So meron pang puang o kakulangan uh, sa pagpondo ng kanilang membership yung subsidized non-contributing sector of the population. Pero ang kasi yung increase naman depende yan sa sweldo mo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, may cap tayo hanggang 40,000 uh, but for next year uh, nag- may mungkahi ang PhilHealth na itaas yung ceiling to 100,000 pesos. 
So, ngayon, yung uh, hatian, 2.75% premium contribution, 50% of which will come from the employer and the other 50% from the employee through payroll uh, deduction. Secretary, lilinawin ko lang doon sa, sa pagtataas ng tobacco excise tax. Uh, pagka naging batas na itong universal health care, uh, magtataas din ba ng presyo ng bawat pakete ng sigarilyo? Oo naman. Magkano ang itataas ang projection natin? Well, depende yan sa uh, desisyon ng uh, kongreso. Uh, kasi ngayon may panukala si uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao na uh, 60 pesos ang karagdagan buwis na ipapataw sa bawat pakete ng sigarilyo. Samantalang ang panukala naman ni uh, Senator J.D. Ejercito ay 90 pesos. Uh, uh, kung uh, sa kasalukuyan kasi, ang uh, itinaas lamang under Train 1 implementation of uh, Train 1 ay 2 pesos 50 centavos lang. So ang tax uh, for 2018 naging 32.50. No? So ang magiging presyo ng uh, isang uh, o bawat pakete ng sigarilyo ay 48.26 under the train one. Pero kung maipapasa at sana naman maipasa ang, alin, ang, ang 90 pesos na panukala ni uh, Senator J.V. Ejercito, eh malaking tulong po ito sa pagtustos ng atin na uh, programang PhilHealth uh, para sa lahat ng uh, Pilipino ay uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng proceeds of about 45 billion uh, uh, 2 million uh, pesos at malaking bahagi nito mapupunta po sa pagpondo ng uh, PhilHealth para doon po sa atin mga may hirap, walang kakayahan magbayad ng kanilang uh, uh, pagiging miyembro at uh, doon naman uh, sa malaking bahagi, 85% of the incremental proceeds will uh, uh, go to uh, health and 80% uh, of the 85% share of uh, the health sector doon pupunta sa PhilHealth at yung namang 20% ay uh, para mapondohan ng atin mga health facilities enhancement program kung saan uh, uh, may malaking kakulangan at pagpondo din ng atin medical assistance to indigent patients program. Thank you, Secretary. Salamat din. So, may tanong po si uh, Christina Bendano. Hi, sir. We're, we're just, di ba we just completed yung train one and then we're now into train two. So, um, is that a separate tax measure, sir? Yung, is it for the tobacco? Yes, I, I believe so. It is a separate uh, measure and the objective is really to increase uh, taxes on uh, same products with the uh, ultimate or end in view of reducing the smoking prevalence in the country. And our target is really to bring it down to the 14% uh, level of smoking prevalence from a high of 21.47%. But in 21.47%, bumaba na rin yan. Kasi nagkaroon na rin tayo ng uh, uh, same tax, I think in 20... 2013. No? So, patuloy na bumababa ang, uh, ang uh, prevalence, uh, smoking prevalence rate uh, ng Pilipinas. Sir, anong mas mauna yung, yung universal health care or yung, yung tobacco tax? Meron bang, you, did you get any assurance from you know, Congress kung ano yung puunahin doon? Uh, mahirap uh, panguna, pangunahan ang uh, anuman na uh, magiging uh, pasya o desisyon ng Congress. Pero ito lang masasabi ko, ang UHC bill ay uh, meron na kaming sulat sa Pangulo na ito'y ma-certific, mabigyan ng uh, 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 certified as an urgent uh, priority bill. So ito naman ay kanyang ibinukang bibig sa kanyang uh, nakaraan sona so, uh, gauging it or basing it uh, on uh, his uh, articulations during the SONA, 
uh, I would like to believe that uh, this will be uh, passed by uh, Congress. So in universal health care is really relying on the excise uh, tax on tobacco to fund yung uh, malaking, requirements. So. Malaking bahagi ho ng atin na uh, Universal Health Care Bill sa aking pong sa amin pong executive version ng uh, ng panukalan ito ay uh, hindi lang doon manggagaling manggagaling din yan sa mga iba pang mga buwis na kinukolekta ng uh, gobyerno ngunit uh, hindi uh, may iwasan na ang pagtustos ng uh, Universal Health Care Bill ay uh, manggagaling din sa incremental uh, tax uh, increases no uh, so that's uh, that's where we are okay and PC question may tanong po si Eileen Talipin dahil plano niyo magdagdag ng excise tax sa tobacco ano daw po ang nangyari sa smoking ban ni Pangulong Duterte kasi hanggang ngayon daw po marami pa rin naninigarilyo sa publiko at tila walang napaparusahan kumusta na daw po ang monitoring ng DOH sa smoking ban? Well, ito yung uh, patungkol sa EO26 uh, uh, na nilagdaan ni Pangulong Duterte noong 2017. 2017 ba, uh, Dr. Uh, Maricar? 2017. So, ang mga local government units ang uh, silang mag uh, i-implement, magpapatupad nitong uh, EO ni Pangulong Duterte at kami umpisahan pa lang natin ang uh, monitoring and uh, impact assessment kung ano na ba ang nangyari. Pero sa ngayon kasi, hindi ko naman na paghandaan so wala akong datos na magpapakita kung uh, epektib epektibo ba ang uh, EO na ito in terms of implementation sa pagsasakatuparan nito. So ay, uh, ito'y pwedeng sagutin natin sa mga susunod na panahon. Okay, MPC, questions? Okay, no more. Sir, may iba, lang, may iba lang ang tanong kasi may nagpahabol dito si Rose Novenario. Ano na daw po ang update sa Dengvaxa? Well, ang update sa Dengvaxa, ang uh, Pangulo ay uh, inatasan ang, uh, ang kabinete na aprobahan nga yung uh, pagbubuo ng uh, expert uh, panel at meron na kaming uh, ibinigay na listahan, sinumite sa uh, CABSEC at ang balita ko sa kasalukuyan ang uh, listahan ng mga uh, eksperto mula sa ASEAN uh, member countries na nagpatupad ng uh, Deng Baksha Immunization Program although limited to the private sector. Kasi tandaan natin sa Pilipinas, ito po ay uh, isinulong uh, hindi lang sa pribadong sektor kundi pati na rin sa uh, uh, public sector. No? In fact, tayo ang pinaka may malaking bilang ng mga nabakunahan ng Deng Baksha. Uh, so, ang uh, ang uh, mga dokumento, ang mga terms of reference, ang listahan ng mga experts ay uh, sa kasalukuyan uh, sa lamesa na daw ni uh, Executive Secretary Medi Aldea. Okay, maraming salamat, Secretary Duque. Uh, Madagdag ko lang, I hope you don't mind, sa Senado, uh, sa mababang kapulungan ay uh, naipasa na ang Deng Vaxia Supplemental uh, uh, Budget, ngunit sa Senado, ngayon ay uh, kanilang uh, uh, pinag-uusapan at binabalangkas at uh, hopefully ito ay maipasa na sa lalong madaling panahon dahil isa rin po ito sa mga batas o sa mga panukala na sinertify ng ating Pangulo as urgent. Okay, um, Christine? Ay, Secretary. Um, um, what do you think of the speech of the President uh, last night where he you know, he said he, he's, he's considering quitting and he wants to retire. I mean, has he, you know, parang, do you think he's serious about it, being you know, part of his cabinet? <laughs> oh, well, it's not the first time the president has said that. No, I think to me it's really just uh, venting out, uh, sometimes out of exhaustion, uh, sometimes... Uh, out of uh, frustrations, you know, he expresses uh, 
uh, some of those frustrations even during the cabinet meetings, you know, uh, the, the fight against corruption, the fight against uh, uh, illegal drugs and uh, the crime that uh, is attached to it, the criminal acts rather attached to it. So I guess it's, uh, you know, just, just venting out. Anybody, you know, we all get to our own residences and we vent out to our to our poor wives and to our children. Sometimes, ah, hirap, ah, hirap naman ng trabaho sa opisina. Mm -hmm. Sa DOH, walang tigil ang, uh, <laughs> ang uh, problema ang uh, atin dapat uh, solusyonan. But I think the President has manifested, on the other hand, a sheer political will to take on a lot of really very difficult issues that have not been addressed as adequately as he is addressing them today. So I think the president needs all the support that he can muster. You know, it's wrong to think that the president is going to solve all the problems for, uh, for us. I think, uh, please disabuse our minds. We need everyone, you know, in government to really rally behind and support the government in all of his uh, uh, substantive initiatives. Lahat ng pool ng kanyang ginagawa sa kalusugan, itong universal health care bill, eh, mukhang ito po ay magiging legacy uh, uh, bill ng presidente, no? Uh, so, uh, dapat uh, suportahan ng uh, ating kongreso maipasa ito sa lalong madaling panahon. At uh, sa uh, marami pang aspeto ng uh, uh, pamunuan at ng ating gobyerno, makikita naman natin na talaga isinusulong ang mga makabuluhan at makahulugan uh, programa na siyang susi sa ating pag-unlad bilang isang uh, bansa. At uh, nananawagan tayo bilang ako naman ang kanyang uh, kalihim sa uh, kalusugan ay dapat uh, pag-ibayuhin natin ang kalusugan ng ating mga kababayan at uh, ito po ang tinatawag natin health among uh, others is a uh, driver of genuine social transformation. No? So, kaya itong UHC, yun ang uh, objective natin, maging malusog ang pinakamaraming uh, uh, mamamayan natin sa Pilipinas. Okay. Chona, you? Sir, uh, since kayo yung health secretary, kasama ba kayo sa nag-check sa health condition ni Presidente and also, um, ano pong inyong assessment sa health condition ni Presidente? Uh, every time I attend the cabinet meetings of uh, the President, no, ang masasabi ko lang, he's... Uh, full of life, very active, very sharp, and uh, obviously it does not suggest uh, na parang may problema sa kanyang kalusugan. Masasabi lang natin, mukhang malakas si Presidente at nakakita mo naman, he's almost everywhere all the time. <laughs> Di ba? Hmm? So, kami nga ang medyo parang nangihihina pa kung titignan ko bilang isang doktor yung mga ibang miyembro ng kabinete, pero si Presidente, tuwid na tuwid ang tayo. At pagka nagsasalita at nagbibigay ng kanyang mga uh, utos, ay uh, talagang makita mong masiglang masigla. Okay. Uh, Hana? Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, si Secretary, uh, Finance Secretary Dominguez, ang sinadjust po niya kanina sa isang presko na pinagwabakasyon po niya si uh, Pangulong Duterte. Kayo po ba, sir, would you like, gusto niyo ba ganun din po yung uh, i-advise niyo po kay Pangulo? Since... Sa bandang huli, si Presidente lang, it's wrong to second guess the President. So, let's leave it to him. If uh, he wants to go on a break, then let's respect it. Uh, I'm not in a position to uh, make any recommendation, at least in so far as I am concerned. Okay, so last, you, last question, sir, kay Tuesday New. Uh, kumusta na daw po? May figure na daw po kayo ng DOH about ng mga biktima ng leptospirosis sa National Capital Region at kung sapat daw po ang mga gamot? Uh, as of leptospirosis reporting number 40, which means morbidity week 40, we have 1,121 lepto cases. And we have, unfortunately, 100 deaths. And it's very unfortunate because ito po ay dapat na madaling maiwasan na sakit. 
Uh, paulit-ulit po natin na uh, eh, binibigay ang uh, abiso, panuntunan ng Department of Health kung paano may iwasan ito. Ngunit, hindi rin naman ma... Uh, hindi rin naman natin na uh, we cannot also help that maraming mga panahon na nagpa-flash floods na mga tao ah, sa labas na at hindi naman na uh, makakuha ng bota para karagdagan proteksyon uh, sa kanilang mga paa dahil alam po natin ang uh, lepto ay nakukuha po ito kapag uh, nakontaminan ng ihi ng daga ang tubig baha. No? So meron naman tayong prophylaxis So patuloy naman ang pagbibigyan natin ng prophylaxis ako nga ay dumalaw sa mga evacuation center ng uh, Marikina sa Malanday uh, Elementary Public Elementary School at ganun din po sa barangay Silangan ng Quezon City. At uh, doon ay uh, nagbigay po tayo ng uh, uh, stocks of uh, doxycycline and other antibiotics where doxycycline is contraindicated. For example, in women, pregnant women and children below 8 years of age, meron po tayong mga replacement antibiotics. Masiguro lang na hindi humantong sa malubhang komplikasyon ang kanilang lepto. So, yan po ang ginagawa natin. Minomonitor po ng atin na uh, DOH National Capital Region at katuwang po dito ang atin mga city health officers ng uh, mga syudad sa buong kamay nilaan. Okay, maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. MPC, no more questions? Okay, salamat. Salamat, Secretary Duque. Salamat po, Yusek uh, Kanda. Salamat, Yusek Badoy. May... Uh, maraming salamat. Last two questions. Baka meron na sa mantanin. MPC? <laughs> Bernadette, may question? Ha? Huh? Okay. Okay na lang po. Maraming salamat, Secretary Duque. Maraming salamat sa ating mga bisita at back to our main studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.